Hello there, welcome back to episode 2 of my tutorial series for Against the Storm Prestige 1. So in the previous episode, we started out with a tiny clearing here. We cleared out this place, currently carrying away the last bits and bobs from the Altar of Decay. We got ourselves drafted together a nice income of food in form of a small farm. We also happen to have access to a lumber mill and we are currently still sitting in front of our third draft haven't fully decided yet where to go with that i'm quite tempted in several directions but i think i am very uh, inclined to pick up the provisioner as this will yield us flour which will help us out a lot this is the new clearing it has been accidentally opened between the episodes because i had to do a screenshot and i wanted to do the screenshot without that Thing here in the screen and some time passed it has been hooked we have a rain spirit totem on top of this we can either burn it down but fuel wise we are not really capable of doing so but we can also perform a ritual so here we have several options of doing this we got the materials of doing so from the altar of decay we can and will though uh, and can and will use the resin because this is something that we are just harvesting randomly from the lush trees here of the biome and I personally find this an excellent way of getting our, our resources going around. So the rain spirit totem will increase the hostility of the forest for quite a while when, uh, when it's being worked on so we shouldn't start that during the storm season which is still lingering for, uh, lingering for uh, couple of seconds more there we go the new year begins and we have grain bags so yeah woodcutter's song would be also amazing but seeing what i see here we're going to go for grain bags as this will bring our grain production at some point in the far-fetched future to insane yields which is good, which is really, really good. So the newcomers are almost there. So we're going to be able to staff out that farm with a second uh, person without any problems. But I am going to put the second person right away here. So let's go slow mo. We got new people. And at this point, I want to get as many hands on deck as possible. So we're picking up now we're going to pick up the smaller one. The smaller package includes two humans, and two humans are just very, very good to pick up. We're also going to put the lizard dude into the ancient hearth, as this is an immediate bonus on uh, on the resolve of everybody. Just a nice little trick on the side. Good. So we need another piece of housing here, as this neighborhood ain't large enough yet. We want to create a neighborhood at some point which will yield 10% increased global production speed. It's a really really good bonus and we can totally use that. We are also at the point where it makes a lot of sense to consider building a new hearth. So we're going to move the second woodcutter camp a little bit more in this direction to carve out the area here a wee bit. Okay. So let's continue. We got five workers available. The first thing that we're absolutely needing to do is we need to burn down that rain spirit totem. Or no, we're performing a ritual on it. This is a corruption decision. This is uh, marked by the game. It is a really, really cool decision though, as we get a minus 50 hostility decrease from this thing. Sure, people will be now unhappy for a while, but little do we care, as this will project us forward quite nicely. Okay, another thing is now important for the city. We should totally build ourselves a trading post at this point of the game. It is really time for that. So, let's go. In the meantime, we're producing our basic materials here, and I probably should stop doing this as we are wasting material. Let's build that lumber mill and stop wasting material, shall we? So the lumber mill does not need any timber, so we're shutting off the plank production right away here. There it goes. 
so there's no more waste of planks at this uh, location. It's very important to me that we get this done ASAP. All right, down here, the herb garden that we have as a cap as a building to rebuild, I'll totally go for that. So it's just two planks, and that's all we'll need. You're also going to plaster this entire place with farm fields, of course, as I want a second small farm now as well. Look at this. This looks perfect. Okay, so we are down to two builders, so there's not that much we can do. Our impatience bar is not at a point where I say it is uh, really vital for our survival to finish one of those orders, so we can safely proceed. It is really important to keep that bar down here in, in, in mind at all times, as this ends your game if you don't. Okay, there's a decision now. We're picking the provisioner. I'm very fond of that decision now, mainly because I realized that flour is going to be so important for the city that we are definitely going to use it. Maybe just as a trade good, who knows. Our food stockpiles though are massively going down. That's because the small foragers camp is not being worked on. So let's try to swap our workforce a little bit like this. Root workstation doesn't work at all anymore. So we might as well unemploy these people, free up a little bit of workforce. I don't want to have anybody else than lizards working on that trapper's camp. It's just more effective like that. We're wasting a lot of uh, potential there if we let a non-lizard harvest here. This is uh, all a chance of double yield going to waste if we don't pick it up. This year we don't mind any further expansion as we have already done or big expansionary thing. So here is the trader. We got our good man old Farloff with this no new portrait looking really good. And as you see here, we already can trade in the 40 oil if we'd wanted to. Let's see. How much money is that? That's 10 ember. I really want to get that done. So I'm selling off some of my provision packs, fill up the rest with copper ore, because that's all materials that we have in ample supply and fill up that. These come from people. We even have an herb garden here around the corner so we can craft them ourselves. That comes from the clay mine, and these come from the trees. The 40 oil, though, must be immediately locked from consumption, though, so we don't accidentally destroy it with the production chains there. Brilliant. That get, get, will get us somewhere, I bet. All right. In the meantime, this herb garden is being finished, and we should probably move the uh, woodcutter's camp way here there we go and this place again requires a small warehouse obviously i think it might be even a uh, good spot for a another hearth maybe not sure about that 100 percent so into the lumber mill we put only the beavers so you see it's even doubly effective as we not only spend less wood per pack uh, per plank we also have the chance of double yields when beavers work in there. So, you know, I keep bad mouthing the crude workstation for a good reason. <laughs> Anyways, so lizard resolve above 24 plus five provision packs. This is legit to me. Dirty trade goods are quite a lot. This is doable, I bet. Not yet right now, but we'll be getting there. And here, 12 trade routes. This is another amazing reward, as we are now at two rewards for plus um, for, for packs. This will... I can already foresee how this will carry us through the game. So, trade routes have now been opened, but we don't have any provision packs. We need new people for that. But uh, we can now export our goods like that. I'll be explaining that once we have the capabilities to do so properly. Right now we don't. We just don't. All right, so let's see. We are lacking, hopefully, only planks. Yes, yes. All right. So our food income shouldn't be only negative at this point. So let's fast forward a little bit. We got 
grain income, we got vegetable income. This should get us somewhere at some point. Alright, ideally we're going to try to get us some workers on these fields here for the storm season. And let's see, here we have enough time for the completion of that event. As you see, hostility level 5 would be really an issue as we have to pay a coat tax. And uh, we can't pay it right now. Okay, so we need to open up one more glade. Let's check out if we can't find one that is uh, well along war, alongside of war plans. This small one here would fit quite well. So we finished that event. And you see here, this goes up immediately. So we could open up that small one here, or we open up that big one next year. I am very inclined to vote for big one next year. So we're going to hold down control while I'm doing this. So my woodcutters are going to cleave their way through there. But I'm employing a third one as I really want to get this uh, going ASAP. All right, we got three workers left building up all the farms. So the farms are ready for fertilization in the storm season. That's really, really good. And we also can use this converted rain totem not as a decoration here. It's harmony decoration, so we can't use it. Speaking about decorations, though, we should bring up this neighborhood bonus now. So we now need blue decorations. These require a couple of planks, but since we are easily providing these now with our new lumber mill, that shouldn't be any bigger issue. We still got plenty of wood, the only thing that's really um, troubling me is the food production, but we'll be getting there. So the next thing that we need to work on now are the many, many orders. So let's get going on that. First things first, we check out if we have any options to do things better. Let's see. The tool shop provides no package production. That's really a tragedy. Let's see, the provisioner is going to provide provision packs, obviously. So, yeah. It boils down to the fact that we have to pack our building materials here. Which is uh, kind of a shame. It always bothers me to do this here. So let's use planks. Yeah, planks and copper. And here comes the storm. We're that happy, and as you see here, we're just on the brink of the next level of hostility, so we don't need to worry about that either. Wonderful. Couldn't be better. Couldn't be better. So, let's see. The woodcutters here can move over to this border of town as well. As far as I see things, the small hearth should be buildable now at that corner, and that is all I desired. So... I'll try to fit this thing on to this border, and here we go. Hood income will balance upwards very soon because of the um, several farms that we got running now. And yeah, I think I need to reduce the woodcutters here because I want the fertilization process. And you know, we're firing up now two more farms for the next year. That should us get that should get us somewhere. The next pressing matter on my mind is, as a matter of fact, a couple of people more, as I have now two times decided for the smaller amount of uh, villages. You really do feel these decisions at some point, but uh, I'm, I stand behind these decisions, so let's see, where can we cut corners here? So I think we can cut down at, uh, with the woodcutters onto three people here. Shouldn't be any biggie. Our wood stockpiles are ample. An ample supply. Wood is of... Uh, wow, whatever. You see, we don't need that many woodcutters. That's a really nice uh, side effect of this uh, biome. You just don't get to clear that much ground this way. But it was really important for me right there to have a another thing available here. 
for builder's sake, because that small warehouse, it'll matter so much in the next season. Alright, so I'll wait out for the newcomers. Please give me humans. Alright, so here we have a package of five people versus a package of four people. We take the five people package, as we have so much work on our hands that I really feel like we need that. Alright, so we can't staff out both farms completely with humans, so we go with a mixed package like that. So, cornerstone-wise, master blueprint. Well, that would help us sort of. But it will reduce gathering speed until we have at least used up 300 resource node charges. But tell you what, we're going to do this. This is a wee bit of a uh, risky situation, well, sort of. But it'll enable us now to gather so many things that we weren't able to gather before. So, we don't need that building anymore currently. Can rebuild it later if need arises. So, we're now going to build. Let's see. Ah, yeah, these bad boys here can carry, can carry that away. That's what I have my, my, uh, my eyes on. The, the point here is we are going to be able to get so much more out of our uh, collection camps. And the uh, collection speed reduction is not bothering me as much as it would because of several reasons. We got the capability to gather our food from the fields now mostly. Maybe just lack one more um, one more production building here and uh, check this out. Another patch of fertile soil. And we get even to use another one of these. So luckily we can perform the same ritual again and get another 50 points of hostility reduction that is premium service my man this is really 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 lucky i mean the burn down rewards would be nice as well but the hostility reduction has such a huge impact on us in so far as we gain a lot out of that long term this is uh, these two decorations together already lowered the hostility level by an entire level on their own this is like turning the clock back more a little bit more than a year i uh, know two years that's pretty big so since it is still drizzle season i want to turn in this one asap especially since it is increasing our income here on a very very important part and that's very unlucky i was so much hoping for a building that allows us to process that ample wealth of food that we are producing in raw form now but Nope, we're just getting access to the Weaver, which is, in all honesty, also very, very powerful and important. Okay, so we still got not that as many workers available as I'd like to, but that's okay. So I'm putting a higher priority now on the uh, hearth construction. As I see this one of the, uh, as one of the more important uh, businesses here. And we can export one part for five amber. Well, I'm not too inclined on that, but I'm going to do this. So this now yields five amber. It takes this time. And if you check mark auto collect, you'll get that money. We are gaining money for each, uh, or we are gaining hostility reduction for every time we sell wor uh, goods. So this will count in as well, as far as I remember. But so does the trader will be incoming this year as well. So let's see, our food income seems to be balancing out somewhat, which is uh, sort of a big relief to me because I was very, very um, troubled about that. I really hope that they get working on the rain spirit totem soon. As you see, they're carrying that stuff over there is really kind of like half the task. And here we can then check out uh, put up the harvesters camp later again currently well that we wouldn't need it uh, needed to delete it oh, well. in hindsight you always smart up all right we got now another hearth going so let's check with our current situation i don't see the capacities here to remove any of these workers from their current situation so sadly i'll have to stick with what i got so let's see, do I have any capability of crop pack production anywhere more useful? No, I don't. 
So we're enabling the crop pack production here now, but we're only allowing it with, uh, with wheat. So currently I am not processing the wheat into flour because I want to finish these jobs first, especially that one, as we'll increase the yield of the other trade pack as well. So it's really, really powerful. Good. We're speeding up our uh, progress here a little bit. This uh, warehouse job here, I think this is really important that we get that done now soon too. As the harvest season is really in front of us, still got a lot of uh, things to do. But well, we will free up workers as soon as this here is done, which will happen before the storm. And here you see more trade routes. We can't export one of our tools, we'll do. Won't export a, another piece of oil though, we'll export another gear wheel here. So as you also see, the trade receivers are, for one, the cities that we've built so far, and for another point, they gain levels. So the more we trade with them, the more money they'll pay. And we can also invest here money into more um, offers. The offers change with every season's change, so... The provisioner here can ultimately provide even more provision packs if needed, as we have now a steady income of herbs. This might be actually a really interesting decision. We'll see about that. Alright, there is a slight case of homelessness occurring here in the city. That does bother me a little bit, but, well, I don't have another firekeeper on, uh, open right now. That is just what it is. Food stockpiles are again more on the downward trend, but uh, yeah, we'll see about that. It's harvest season, new uh, goods come on in, and let's see what Zorg has in store for us. He might be willing to trade with us as well. And new order have, has arrived. All right, ancient tablets and glade openings versus two dangerous glades within discovery of them within 180 seconds each. Nah, thank you. I'd rather stay exploring. We have already uncovered so many of these. I don't need. I don't know if I need the archaeology victory point. It's one of those things where I feel like I can't use this if I need it later, or I simply don't. We'll decide about that when it's time for that. Now, we got some money that I want to spend, and in this particular situation, we are going to spend it on food. And here, the scores are, oddly enough, cheaper than the uh, raw food. That is, in game terms, it actually makes a terrible lot of sense, as the uh, raw food can be processed into larger batches of processed food so the game takes that into account as well sort of anyways i'm rambling so we're going to adjust that and buy ourselves a bit of food here on the side this will help us out for uh, for the time being that is perfectly fine in my book so let's do this we finally have the warehouse then completed here in a hot minute so our income here on the farms will be larger soon as the farmers don't need to put their harvests down at this a very very unfavorable point so back here well if we would be excavating down there a bit like something like this we could be bringing up the third half there i like the idea of that so what is up here we could now export packs of building materials and tell you what we do. This is just very, very desirable in any uh, aspect right now for me, because I really want to keep this going as hard as I can. At the same time, I'm now holding back the turn in of my orders, because I don't want it to... Uh, I don't want the reputation to be not gained during this time because, you know, Cornerstone rerolls are amazing. It's just so powerful that I, I seriously feel bad about not using it. All right, let's put that small hearth up to task and start building homes back here so we get the uh, neighborhood bonus back there as well. Storm's up, but we don't need to bother about that too much. Don't need to be bothered about that too much. 
we are holding up just fine. So let's export another ba uh, crate of building material. It does not hurt us. We have the industry to support this as we are mostly exporting planks, which are we are producing in masses here in the lumber mill. That's economy going. And here we already have gained the first hostility reduction via protected trade. And this will now go on like that. Trading is now what lowers the hostility for us. Trading makes us win. That is really, really awesome. This is one of my favorite uh, strategies to play the game. We're even going to go for that small one. We could export larger amounts like this, but we're just going to export a very small amount. And I want that weaver down. That's really important to me. So what up with the packs of crops though? Why is this taking so long? In all honesty, I don't know. We still have a shortage of five houses, I do notice here, so we might as well try to get that going there. Put the hostility reducer decoration down. And at this point now, I want to export as relentless as possible, as we have one task for that, the trade routes task. And we also gain so much by doing this. All right, the crude workstation is not running right now, so we don't have an income of bricks. So if we happen to need bricks somewhere, I need to re-employ somebody. But let's check out the newcomers. So we can gain three humans here on this side. That's a package with six people. That's a package with five people. Here at this point, we really need those hands on deck, as we have even another patch of fertile soil here that I haven't even uh, picked this uh, season simply because I didn't know what to do with that. So fungal guide, not really interesting for us as we are not producing any mushroom. Gain amber for ale production. Well, theoretically might be a thing. Practically don't know yet. We're going to turn in the big delivery reward now as it is now drizzle season. And let's see. So we got scores, biscuits, and pigment. This is really, really something that I was waiting for. We don't really have a huge income of these goods for the scores, but we have everything else on the, on the line, but most importantly, biscuits. We can make these out of the materials that we got, and maybe that pigment will be interesting at some point later down the road too. But most importantly, we finally have an, a source of processed food. This is uh, this has been really a, a a thing that has been bothering me a lot between these episodes. So we haven't gained a production for ale, so we reroll that. Let's see, gain amber for sea marrow produced. Gain additional active trade route slots, and traders will arrive quicker. That's just what we want for this kind of city, as we are now going crazy with the exports as hard as we can. I won't be exporting too many of my parts anymore as we still have that master blueprint cornerstone going which basically says we need to harvest as much of, as possible of these i'm also keeping all these workers busy now for a hot minute as we have so many buildings to build that i really want to wait up until that is just uh, done you see we have here just so much but one thing that I will put up immediately is a weaver here, as I see it mandatory for our city to have a production here. And we also going to need one person here for the further brick production, as this is also absolutely vital for our further success. So let's empty the inventory of that thing of everything it does not uh, it's not supposed to keep we are going to make sure that the building materials will be produced here housing is getting done now we need more housing here in that corner or wait a sec this is a bad spot the spots next to the road are always the most uh, appealing ones So let's see, that house is taking down three, we need that. And this area here is already 
full enough with people that we can easily put up the decoration count to make that a encampment. This will help us with the um, with the happiness for the city again. All right, so the city is coming to a uh, very, very stable point at this very moment. What we now require is we need somebody at the provisioner's uh, place making up to 50 flour for the city. And at the cookhouse, we put up two people. And here we can now for the very first time put up a good use of our consumption control. So, eh, there. Yeah. We don't want any sources of insects or meat being eaten anymore for the sake of the scores. We could also cancel out mushrooms, but these are not coming up too often. We are mostly gaining meat of the Slickshell Broodmother income here. And here's always a bit of uh, things on the side. We are also gaining here. Ah, the Bleeding Mushroom Patch. So let's put a people in here and start processing that food for good. Here at this spot, flour. We should also stop consuming roots raw. And yeah, the real important part here, though, is that you must keep an eye on the fact that if you forbid too many things, your people won't be able to eat anything anymore. So uh, be careful about that. All right, let's rotate another time. That brings me to the end of today's episode, my friends. We are really at a uh, pretty good spot, but uh, we should not get too confident. Impatience of the Queen is closing on uh, in on us, and we need to work on that as fast as we can. Luckily, there's plenty of opportunity, and we are going to cover that in the very next episode. Up until then, I thank you so, so much for watching. Drop me your comments down below. And feel free to leave a thumbs up on that video as it helps tremendously to teach the algorithm that it should recommend this video to other people as well. And of course, feel free to subscribe. I'm always happy to have more people here. And last but not least, the description box is brim filled with links that get, take you to my Discord, my Patreon, my PayPal, my Buy Me a Coffee account, and of course my Twitch, where I also happen to stream each Sunday evening in Middle European time zone. Big thanks to everybody supporting the channel, and a big thanks to you watching this video up until the very end. I deeply appreciate. Hope you had a good time. See you all on the next one. Bye-bye.